talk about Mr. Mike Bloomberg. Old Bloomberg, the billionaire that bought himself uh, uh, the, the Democratic ticket uh, to, to run in the Democratic ticket. Uh, <laughs> who, who I know I ranted and raved about this the, the, in the last road reflection, but that guy's fucking Trump with the fucking D by his name. That's all he is. He's just Trump. He's a rich fucking white dude that has, that has said horrific things. Especially horrific things about minorities and women. Uh, I believe there was an article going around where he told a woman that was pregnant to kill it, to kill her baby. Uh, that was that was a thing that he said. Which, look, even if you're like, even if you're kind of the person that's like, abortion is murder. Like saying that to somebody to kill it is like, what is happening in your brain? to be like, oh, this is the right thing to say. Congratulations on your new baby. Are you going to kill it? Because uh, we can't afford to have you take maternity leave. I have billions of dollars I need to make off of your labor. And, uh, uh, and, and, And if you are gone for even 30 days, uh, how am I going to exploit a woman? That's Michael Bloomberg's brain. That's, that's what is going on up top. But that guy's just Trump, right? Like, at the last debate, when, uh, not the South Carolina debate, but the ones before that, the first debate that he, the his premier debate, where he premiered himself, he, he got his ass handed to him. And part of it, to me, was, I think the reason why the DNC let him do that is uh, possibly to make these establishment candidates look good, maybe, uh, that, uh, that this guy is so fucking horrific, uh, <laughs> that maybe, maybe they'll, uh, maybe these establishment candidates will look good, and they did, right, like, Elizabeth Warren fucking took him down, uh, even Amy Klobuchar looked better than him, and that, that lady fucking put an innocent black kid in prison for life, and bragged about it, and was like, this is a point of pride, and even she looked better than him. Fucking Joe Biden look better than him. Fucking Joe Biden, get out of town. Pete Buttigieg was the only one that that kind of didn't because he was like, maybe when Bloomberg fails, he'll be another billionaire that funds my campaigns, and I can, I can get closer to fifty billionaires whose balls have been in my mouth. Like, he's the only one that didn't look good at all. Fucking Bernie Sanders went toe to toe with him. That was fucking great too. Uh, watching the clips of, of him being like, "Oh, Bernie's communist," and Bernie's like, "What the fuck are you talking about, dude? I just want people to like have a good life, and uh, and your model doesn't seem to fucking do that. So maybe we do something different. Maybe we do a thing where everybody's taken care of. Oh, the communisms are gonna come for my money. That's that's what he sounded like on stage but that's the tip of the iceberg uh when it comes to how uh genuinely awful and terrible uh mike bloomberg really is um so let's talk about some of them uh first and foremost there was an intercept article that came out a little while ago that showed that his campaign exploited prison labor to make his campaign phone calls and uh, so they hired this company called Procom, which is call centers in New Jersey and Oklahoma. And two of the Oklahoma ones uh, are in prisons. That's where the calls are coming from. They're coming from uh, correctional facilities, right? And uh, uh, look, I think the UN needs to get on board uh, and, and realize that this is a form of torture and nobody needs to be put through this kind of torture, especially prisoners. They don't need to be tortured like this. Have you, have you, like people don't talk to call center people very nicely. And these people are already in prison. They're being threatened with solitary. Uh, they're not being treated very well. And then on top of that, they have to make phone calls for Mike Bloomberg, who probably advocated for some of them to be in prison. Uh, <laughs> then. And then not just that, they have to hear a bunch of assholes, like, yell at them. Like, that's not okay. 
the UN should do something about this level of torture that's happening in prisons. That's what that's what the, I think the UN needs to get on board with that. Uh, take down solitary and having prisoners uh, make call center calls. They don't need that kind of they don't need that kind of abuse in their life. One of the correctional facilities, uh, the Dr. Eddie Warrior Correctional Facility. Uh, what a name, Dr. Eddie Warrior. Uh, wonder what that guy did to earn earn his uh, earn earn a prestigious. Uh, honor of having a prison named after him. Like, what did you do, Dr. Eddie? Jeez. Uh, so this is a minimum security women's prison, and uh, uh, what they called California on behalf of the Bloomberg campaign. Um, and, uh, you know, nobody that got the calls knew that the calls were being made by prisoners. Uh, the, uh, you know, they didn't. They didn't disclose that information. Uh, fucking, why would you, right? Like, are you really gonna vote for the guy? Are you? Are you even gonna consider voting for the guy that is exploiting prison labor? Like, <laughs> no. Nobody's. Everyone, nobody's gonna be like, oh, you guys are fucking over prisoners that we already gotta torture and treat terribly. Oh, okay, cool, cool. That's fine. Yeah. What are your policies? I'll listen. <laughs> like. I think you can. I think you can safely assume that this guy's policies are going to be just dog shit. I think you can very safely make that assumption, and they are. They are dog shit. Uh, so Bloomberg's campaign, uh, when when this came out, uh, made a statement that oh we didn't know, but we didn't know that this was happening. Oh my God, we've and we've completely cut off. Uh, contact with the subcontract. What? Did, what? That's crazy. We had no idea. That's so crazy. That's that's what the Bloomberg campaign did. Uh, and then Procom comes out. The company comes out and says, "Hey, uh, look, we're not exploiting the prisoners. We paid the prison facility seven twenty-five an hour to make these calls." And then uh, the the prison, the the correctional facility pays the prisoners who who make these calls. Uh, and what the prisoners are getting paid is anywhere between uh, twenty and twenty seven dollars a month. I did the math. Uh, the the low end of that is about thirteen cents a month, or or thirteen cents an hour. Sorry, thirteen cents an hour. That's fucking insanity that you are paying somebody that little and then the fucking prison is, is, is profiting off of it, right? That's one of the ways these prisons make money is that they exploit the labor of the people that are in there and the companies that are exploiting this labor will pay the correctional facilities directly and then the correctional facilities get to basically take ni- over 90% of what these prisoners actually make. That's what we're seeing right here, right? It's fucking... Like seven twenty-five an hour is the federal minimum wage, which is what they're paying the correctional facility, and the correctional facility is basically paying them the equivalent of thirteen cents an hour. That's fucking crazy. You're keeping like ninety-nine percent of the money. Like this is this is essentially prison slavery. Now, the Procom. This, this information is out there now, right? Like, I'm assuming that the CEO of Procom can read enough to to, to see these numbers that the Oklahoma Department of uh, uh, the o- Oklahoma Correctional Facilities are paying these people so low that maybe uh, you need to you need to one not do business with these people and two uh, figure out how to pay the the prisoners a little bit better, right? Like Procom could do that. But they're not. Instead, what the what the CEO of Procom essentially came out and said was, uh, "Hey, you know, we're giving them seven. We're giving them what we're what we're legally authorized to. Uh, the rest of it is up to the correctional facility." Yeah, but you're if you have the if you're in that position of power and you have the uh, ability to go to this correctional facility and say, "Hey, pay your fucking prisoners. You know, pay them pay them six fifty. 
if that's what you know I'm, I'm not saying that's what you should pay them but I'm saying the corporation could be like pay them most of what we're giving you so that these people can like actually find value in who they are and not be treated as less than human which is essentially what the correctional facilities are doing now and Procom is complicit in it because they're not fucking saying anything and if Bloomberg's company found out if Bloomberg campaign found out about it uh, this guy makes 68 billion dollars that's an astronomical amount of money you could have instantly covered the difference instantly covered the difference and said I'm directly giving this to the prisoners I'm not making it to the if you really wanted to show that you were uh, you were on the like on the side of racial justice, on the side of prison reform, and, and a bunch of these progressive policies, you would have come out and been like, "Yeah, I'm going to cover the difference." These people are getting paid how much? Thirteen cents an hour. That's crazy. I'm going to cover the. I'm going to cover the seven. Um, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to cover the difference and give them. Make sure that they're getting paid fifteen. And then you would still have most of your sixty-eight billion dollars to you know force an intern to watch you masturbate or whatever Bloomberg is into I don't I don't know I don't know but he didn't they just said well we have cut ties great good for you do you want us to give you a cookie for kind of doing the thing you probably shouldn't have been doing in the first fucking place fucking ridiculous reading articles like this and then you know I've been driving around I was, I was in Arkansas uh, a little over a week ago and uh, it, you know th- there's there's not a lot of um, I don't see a lot of yard signs but uh, I saw like a couple of Bloomberg signs which was so bizarre to me, which is like, who, who, why are, who is fucking supporting this guy? What fucking Democrat would, would legitimately sit there? And look, if you are a Democrat that legitimately supports Michael Bloomberg, yo, leave a comment. Tell me what the fuck your, what, what your thought process is on supporting someone like him. This is basically Democratic Donald Trump. This is Donald Trump with a blue motherfucking tie. That's it. Let us continue as to why Michael Bloomberg is fucking terrible. Because <laughs> there's more. Uh, he, uh, he wanted to uh, fingerprint food stamp recipients in New York. Uh, and he said he wanted to do this is because there are some people, some people, that defraud the system. And he's not wrong. There are some people that defraud the system. There are always going to be some people that are going to defraud the system, that are going to take advantage of something that's out there to help them because they feel entitled uh, and, uh, and, and, and full of ego um, to do so. Some people will do that Uh, but making laws based on what some people do uh, to fuck over most of the people that actually fucking need this stuff uh, seems illogical and irrational and Michael Bloomberg made a law uh, that fits the bill of illogical and irrational by fingerprinting uh, people that receive food stamps as a security measure, you know, it's like, why are we fucking making laws and, and, and rules based on like a small percentage of people? How fucking scared of you scared, scared are you like that you need to make a law based on like, Oh, well, there was that one person that did this thing. Well, we should probably make a law so nobody ever does it again. It's like, what? No, nobody even... Like, there's so many people that disagreed with what this person did. I'm sure there's tons of people that look at these people that that defraud the food stamp system and, you know, take food stamps away from people that actually fucking need it and stress out a a, a social system that that is uh, put in place to, to help people in need. And they'll look at it and go, well, fuck those people. Fuck the defrauders. We don't want them around. 
that's not okay. We, you know, like, but they're, they're they're not making like they're not like. Well, we need to take we need to punish the whole food stamp system in order to to correct that system. I don't know. Have a better measure of like vetting people. Maybe I don't. I don't really know how to how to fix something like that. But I do know that I think fingerprinting recipients of food stamps uh, when they are already like under a point of stress, already like. Where they're like, oh shit, I hope I don't lose it this month. What is the purpose of that? Why make it harder for them? Um, it just doesn't make any sense to me, right? We're, tre- we're Realistically, what ends up happening is like we're treating these people like criminals. That's what we do. We don't, we don't fingerprint fucking innocent people. We don't do that. We don't fingerprint innocent people. We fingerprint guilty people to put them on record. And he defended it, too. He was just like, well, you know, you got to do it or else other people are going to take advantage of it. That's what's going to happen. We have a we have an increase in people uh, jumping into the food stamp program. Yeah, probably because no one can fucking afford to live in your fucking state, dude. You ever think about that? Maybe maybe people can't afford to live in New York City because they're not getting paid enough. That they all they all need to go jump onto food stamps and get assistance. So that they don't die. That could be a thing. You could advocate for a higher minimum wage. You could push businesses to, you know. Hey, here's a fucking thought. Why don't you take about $5 billion and redistribute that amongst the people in your in your city that could really use it? Holy shit, that would still leave you with $63 billion fucking dollars. An astronomical amount of money. And look, if it is really about, you know, going after these fraudsters and hucksters that are defrauding a system that people need in order to in order to live, in order to like take care of themselves, uh, then I think we should do it all around to all of the other fraudsters and hucksters, all the CEOs and bankers and State Department execs. That have defrauded the American people. You should, every time they go in to get their groceries, they should get fingerprinted, they should have an ID check, and then they should, they need to prove uh, that that week uh, they helped out a poor person that they fucked over before. And if they can't prove that, they don't get their fucking organic peas or whatever the fuck they're eating. I feel like that's only fair. Feel like, and, and if and look if there's a there's some you know CEOs and bankers and State Department execs are like wait a minute I that system doesn't seem fair hey I'm gonna tell you what you tell all these other people life's not fair life's not fair it's hard it's hard it's very difficult the water (laughs) uh this is the thing that he believes it right uh he talked about a minimum wage and he was like oh i don't know i don't know if we can increase the minimum wage because uh it 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 usually leads to like larger rates of unemployment uh because when you increase the minimum wage these companies are more likely to fire people and they'll say well we can we do this job with fewer employees and they usually go, yeah, and they, and then, you know, they, they go ahead and fire people. And first of all, uh, why is that on the fault of, like, the working class people that just want to be paid the right amount for the work that they're doing? Why, why, why is that, why, why do these fucking rich CEOs and shit pin that on them? That's on you, motherfucker. You're the ones that decided to fire these people. Like I was, we, Lee, Lee and I were talking about this. You know, I did, I did a, a video about uh, Bob Mills uh, democratizing his workplace, where, where his, uh, his, his uh, employees own the company and he has a trust for them and everything. Yeah, it's great. That's awesome. That's, what, that's, that's kind of the way that I think it should be. And, and then there was a tech executive, maybe like three or four years ago, 
that decided that he is going to cap his salary at about at just a little over a million dollars a year and then make sure that everybody in his company is making about 70 70k and uh and you know lee and i were, were talking about it and he was like the result of that was like there's a bunch more people that are super happy and the company is like making way more fucking money now and uh and everybody seems to be doing very well it's like yeah Bloomberg, you're fucking wrong, bro. Like, when you fucking give people the money that they actually deserve for the jobs that they're doing, people are a lot happier and they're more excited about coming to work. So your I, your idea uh, that, oh, increasing the minimum wage will lead to more unemployment and it gets in the way of job creation is, yeah, because the job creators are driven by fucking greed, you psycho. Maybe if you weren't fucking driven by greed, and if you were driven by the by, by just creating something uh, to to benefit society, to to benefit your employees, to benefit mankind in general, you wouldn't you wouldn't have this fucking opinion. That's wrong. It's a wrong opinion. So what does he propose uh, instead of instead of uh, increasing the minimum wage, which is what we should be doing anyway? And by the way, I, I know I've talked about this in a, in a prior video before too is I think it, I think at this point we need we need more than $15 an hour $15 an hour was great for 2002 but uh, you know 18 years later I think the minimum wage probably needs to be about 22 25 bucks an hour with inflation the cost of living going up into various places right and that's I mean that's that's federalizing the minimum wage too but you know right now fucking 725 an hour in a city like San Francisco or a city like New York City it is it you you can't do dick all with that. You just you just can't. That's not a that's not a thing that works for you. So, I mean, if we're gonna talk about, I I could go on and maybe I will in a, in a different video about, um, you know. I, what what really needs to happen in this country is I think we I think we need a total reformation uh, that uh, a, a particular place that you live in doesn't have more value uh, and, uh, and and makes other people feel like shit for the other places that they live in um, and you know that that, that way we kind of even out property prices even out uh, you know the, the culture that we're living in and uh, all that sort of stuff but here's the thing man like increasing minimum wage, wanting to increase the minimum wage, that's not the working class's fault. If it wanting to increase the minimum wage increases unemployment, that's that's on the fucking corporation. That's on the CEO. That's on the billionaires that run these fucking companies and they are they are greedy. They are operating on fucking greed. And that's and that's what they're doing. And then they're pinning it on these workers. To make it look like, oh, the work, you know, if the working class would just stop being greedy, we wouldn't have to fire them because, I mean, come on, I'm trying to make 70 billion. I'm trying to get to that 70 B, baby. You know, I gotta, I gotta uh, purchase another helicopter. Just, I'm not even to, to utilize just to kind of have it because because I don't want the other billionaires to think that I'm, uh, you know, just uh, uh, upper middle class. Ugh. That's the attitude that these fuckers have at these CEOs. Uh, that, that these CEOs have at these corporations. And if we're going to talk about Bloomberg, I can't, uh, I, I can't not bring up motherfucking stop and frisk. Uh, that, that racist, awful policy that he put into place he i mean he said some atrocious fucking racist shit about it and a bill, i know a billion people have done a video about this uh you know uh it, it's it's sort of the flagship stick the, the thing that people talk about with how awful michael bloomberg is with with stop and frisk and, and he's defended it i think like 2018 20 maybe maybe even in 2019 he defended it and said that this was a necessary thing to do because you know uh while white people were just being put into prison uh like like too much and and we really need to even that out because uh because if we don't put people in prison who i mean who's gonna make my phone calls who's gonna make my phone me personally calling people that's crazy 
I have to uh, yell at women to get abortions so that they can make me more money. You know, it's all about the Bloomberg, baby. It's all about the billion Bloomberg. The triple B, billion Bloomberg, baby. That's what it's all about in the Bloomberg campaign. By the way, does anybody know his fucking slogan is... Is it just Michael Bloomberg? Fuck everybody, I'm the best. Is that is that it? Because it kind of seems like that's probably going to be it. He put out this racist fucking policy. He defended it. He said a bunch of other racist shit. Like, uh, uh, most of the crime is committed uh, by... Uh, 90% of the crime is committed uh, in minority neighborhoods by minority males between the ages of 16 and 25. And stop and frisk is absolutely necessary to, uh, to, 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 to take care of this uh, major problem that uh, our society has. Like, no, 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 no. I think the major problem society has is with people like you who fucking think you can circumvent the fucking law and exploit a bunch of people, throw a bunch of people's lives away, treat treat people of color like trash, and then get away with it, and then and then you want to be praised for it on top of that. You can fuck right off. There's a kid that killed himself because he was uh, sent to sent to Rikers. He was sent to Rikers, uh, and and he committed suicide in 2015. Uh, and uh, you know, Bloomberg said nothing about it. He probably thought that kid deserved it. It's the kind of fucking human being he is. He also looks like a much wrinklier Mitch McConnell. That's, like, Michael Bloomberg kind of looks like a, like, I, I've been thinking about, like, I just keep staring at him. He's like this tiny little dude. Uh, and I think he's just kind of like a wrinklier Mitch McConnell. And he, <laughs> he did that Aspen Institute interview where, uh, he talked about the fuck did he talk about? He talked about uh, like that's where the that statistic came out of, uh, where he said like, oh, but it's mostly going to be these adolescent uh, minority males that commit ninety percent of the crimes. And it's just like you're using falsified, like you're like this is like race science bullshit, like the era of race sciences, uh, where where they were like, oh, the, uh, the black people have a skull size. Uh, of this much and it's shaped this way and their brains possibly can't work the way that white people's brains work because white people's heads are shaped this way and they're this big and that's the optimal size for intelligence and superiority or whatever the fuck it was but it's just like it's false science that they use to justify racism that's that's all I mean that's really all all he's doing it's like he's like I have data and science to prove that what I'm saying is right it's like no you don't you don't fucking have shit you're just a, you're just a racist making shit up to fucking justify your racism and then just say that it's not racism because science that's it's not what science is here for fuckface <laughs> And there's and th- like there's still laws that that are kind of like stop and frisk. I covered this in in, a, in one of the dispatches uh, a, a maybe a week or two ago. That basically like if you see somebody that you feel like is commi- is doing an extraordinary act, that that's that's what the law in North Carolina is called. So it's called the extraordinary act law, where you see somebody doing something extraordinary, right? And it's a vague definition of extraordinary, and it's definitely not like. They're levitating or some shit. It's just like a black person with a water bottle with a Black Lives Matter t-shirt. And they're like, oh, no. And then and they, cops can basically go stop and frisk them um, and harass them and, uh, you know, try to ruin their lives and, so, and, and shit like that. It's just, and, that's, and that's what it is. That's what that law is. It's, it's protesters. Ver- it's, it's stop and frisk protest edition. That's basically what that law is. That's, that's Michael Bloomberg's legacy, by the way. It's just these fucking terrible laws, 
these fucking terrible policies that fuck over poor people, that fuck over the middle class. He has no, he doesn't give a shit about any of us. But he's gonna sit there and pretend, and then, and then sit there and also be like, "Well, I'm not gonna make you, uh, make you guys, you know, pay uh, me to to run a campaign." Uh, I'm just going to pay it all myself, which means I represent me and me alone. And America is just me. Bloomberg 2020. America is just me. Well, fuck that guy. Hey, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for checking out this video. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Give it a share. Make sure you are uh, subscribed to all of my pages that you get updates when these videos come out. Uh, the, the road reflections uh, come out kind of sporadically. Uh, the dispatches come out every single Friday. And uh, when Forkful of Noodles uh, is released, they will be released on Mondays. Uh, so uh, make sure you're, you're, you're subscribed to the channel because I do put out uh, a good bit of content. Uh, if you enjoy the topics that I discuss in any of these videos, you will probably enjoy my live stand-up comedy because I talk a lot about these sort of topics in my live stand-up comedy. And I am right now on tour. I'm on tour right now, you guys. Uh, I'm on the road hitting across the country, uh, getting ready to record my next hour, politely angry. Uh, but I have tour dates coming up in uh, New Orleans, Louisiana, Biloxi, Mississippi, Memphis, Tennessee, St. Louis, Missouri, Des Moines, Iowa. We added Des Moines, Iowa to the tour. Uh, Moline, Illinois, Chicago, Illinois, Indianapolis, Indiana. And then I'm going to be recording my album March 20th in Washington, D.C., March 21st in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. Uh, and then April 2nd through the 4th in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania for the Pittsburgh Fringe Festival. Uh, you can grab all of your tickets on my website at ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com. Uh, make sure you snag those tickets, RSVP to those events. And come hang out with me. Come check out uh, my live shows. Uh, another cool thing is I'm also going to be opening for Lee Camp on his book release tour. And Lee is going to be coming all across the country. Uh, I, I have the honor and pleasure of opening for him. Uh, and uh, we are going to be in Flagstaff, Arizona, Tucson, Arizona, Asheville, North Carolina, Greensboro, North Carolina, Atlanta, Georgia, Burlington, Vermont, Montreal, Quebec, Ottawa, Ontario, Columbus, Ohio, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Cleveland, Ohio, Toronto, Ontario, and we're adding a bunch more dates uh, as we speak. Uh, you can go to Lee's website, leecamp.com slash schedule, and if you purchase VIP tickets right now, you will get a copy of Lee's book and a souvenir USB of his DVD uh, for free with the purchase of a VIP ticket. Uh, so get, grab your tickets. What's everybody waiting for? You don't want to miss Lee Camp when he comes to your shows. Super fucking awesome uh, to catch his shows. So make sure you are uh, doing that. And another way to uh, help and support sh uh, shows like this, sh independent media, uh, is, is very, very much dependent on uh, uh, people's support. Uh, if you have the ability to financially support uh, this show, you totally can. Uh, a couple different ways you can do that. Uh, one is by becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha. Uh, you can go to that we go, go to the website, check out the, the details, uh, what kind of rewards you get, what kind of uh, goals you are helping achieve, um, and, uh, and, and you get uh, exclusive access to uh, you know, unheard tracks. Uh, once or twice a month you get unheard tracks. Uh, that aren't available on any album storytelling material, uh, and some of the uh, some of the higher tiers also get free tickets to my live stand-up comedy shows, and uh, and and uh, uh, audio to longer sets as well. Uh, but another way is by becoming uh, a sustaining member over on my Bandcamp at ramennoodlescomedy.com. 
www.bandcamp.com. Uh, starting at five bucks a month, you get exclusive unreleased collection of stand-up comedy and storytelling material. Uh, and if, if neither of those really appeal to you and you want, you want to make direct contributions directly to this show, go to my website, ramennoodlescomedy.com, and you'll see uh, these big orange buttons. These big orange buttons uh, are, are, are ways that you can directly could become a sustaining member right on my website. That helps, uh, it, it, you know, increase and improve the quality of uh, this show, Forkful of Noodles, Taboo Table Talk, and The Dispatch. Uh, that, uh, that those are all the all, all the shows that I release uh, pretty frequently, and it helps DIY independent stand up comedy. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thank you guys so much for uh, for, for for getting all the way to the end of these videos. I very much appreciate uh, everybody that, that that watches, shares, likes all this stuff. Uh, the, the returning uh, viewers, the, the new viewers, the, the people that have already become sustaining members, every, you guys are fucking uh, awesome. Uh, I love you guys. And uh, till next time, we will see you on the road. Bye, everyone.